Go in live. I am live. It says I'm live. So here I am. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Tales from a Professional Nerd. My name is Brian C.P. Steele, and I will be your nerd today and any other day that you watch one of my silly shows, whether live or not. Uh, so today we're doing a live. Um, as I mentioned last uh, last week, that um, I don't have, uh, I didn't have a topic for today. Uh, I'm waiting on a couple of things to the green light slash clear before I can talk about them. Um, and uh, I wanted to instead uh, share with you a little uh, a little bonus, we'll say. Um, but first, the week in Brian. We do that really quick just to get it out of the way because there's not a lot that's been going on apart from just me running my everyday life. Uh, personal, person, personal wise, two big things happened per in the in the personal life of Brian. Um, the uh, the first and foremost, uh, no, we still haven't heard back from the state of Indiana about Natalie's disability. They are excruciatingly slow. Um, but uh, the the first thing uh, is that uh, I am now officially back to the gym and not just doing the massage tables. Uh, I am back at it. It hurts. I hate it, but it needs to happen uh, because I have definitely plateaued quite a bit. Um, the other thing is I am super proud of my son. Uh, he passed his driver's uh, his learning permit driver's test thing uh, on the first go. So I now have a learner's permit possessing child. Oof. Uh, it's scary. It is super scary. It terrifies me to think that at some point he will uh, be behind the wheel of a car, not because of him, just because of him being out there and people are crazy and it's, it's nuts. It's crazy. I love it. I'm terrified of it. I'm very proud of him. Yeah. Uh, painting wise, I have done nothing. Uh, I haven't put brush uh, since I'm all those models I primed last week. I have done nothing with them. Uh, it just, it, <laughs> Jeremiah says he needs an APC. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that would be great. I would love for him to have uh, an armored vehicle. Although I'm pretty sure no one else would want him to have an armored vehicle. Um, so yeah, I have done it. no painting. Uh, gaming wise, uh, I honestly haven't done much except for role playing uh, or except for video gaming. I haven't had a chance to do any real role playing. Um, not even like on streams or anything. Like it's it's just been it's been a, a, a very slow week. Uh, done a little bit of play testing for some intergalactic hero stuff. Um, but a lot of times, I don't know if anybody out there has done any play testing before. A lot of times, you're not really role playing you're not really getting into the uh into the game itself you're not really getting super deep into the characters you're really just kind of testing the mechanics making sure that this alien can headbutt that alien and and you know does this st uh, spaceship make any sense you know does the system make sense um getting some good feedback from the playtesters in our discord uh, and, uh, if you aren't on the Intergalactic Heroes Facebook page, you probably should be, because I keep leaking cool stuff over there, too. Uh, which leads us directly into work. Um, so work stuff. I've been focusing a lot on Intergalactic Heroes, uh, trying my best to get a, like, a full beta rules manuscript done. Um, that's what I would love to have uh, ready here in a little bit. Get myself prepped up for uh, Origins and Gen Con. They they will hit us very very soon, um, much sooner than than people might think. And getting a lot of uh, ego program stuff written, uh, written and and sent out to other writers and stuff. Uh, we've got a a very very cool special event that's going to happen at Gen Con based on the organized play system. Um, and, uh, I got to make sure that that gets all taken care of and done. I uh, handed in my surviving strange hollow manuscript stuff earlier this week and, uh, waiting to hear back on the pitch for my next Shadowrun novel. So a lot going on in the land of Brian, uh, as always. Uh, oh, we got some comments. Uh, uh working out sucks. I don't, so I don't, I don't mind working out. I enjoy knowing that I'm doing something to try and stay on this planet a little longer. Um, but with the, I've got, I've got a nasty sciatic 
right now. And there are certain things that just suck when I'm there. So working out itself doesn't suck, but um, sometimes it can be kind of a nightmare. And honestly, every every time I go to the gym, I spend a half an hour in the sauna after, after my gym stuff. Um, I love the sauna. I would live there all day if I could. Um, and I get a lot of like me brain space. Uh, I get a lot of me time up in, up in my skull, uh, several design elements for, for the, the games I've made in the last year, um, have come from me just sort of being in my head, uh, during, uh, during a, a, a nice sauna, uh, do, 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 do driving lessons help with your stress and insurance rates. You're not wrong. Um, and in fact, uh, he, ha we, we actually have him in a driver's ed course. Um, he has not been behind the wheel apart from like a little bit with us, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, we have Nat's games. Yes, that's right. My, uh, my wife's uh, Land of Monsters D&D uh, &D game is tomorrow. Uh, so I will get some role-playing stuff and I'll report back next week. Um, you've been possibly doing too much gaming, Jeremiah. Uh, I've been in 13 hours of games this week. Whoa. Uh, yeah, no, I, I've got too much work stuff. Um, honestly, I've had, uh, right now to do that much gaming. Um, I know next week, so tomorrow I've got Land of Monsters, and next week I've got uh, the uh, every so often Rifts game and uh, a game, my uh, Drunken Monk game down in Indianapolis. So I've got a lot, a lot of uh, role playing over the next like eight days. Um, but up until then, kind of slow. Uh, all right. So that's the weekend, Brian. Not a lot. Like I said, there, you know, it's it's a lot of the same. And what I wanted to do is, um, we a few weeks ago we tried to get the D and D Trivial Pursuit that I got for Christmas um, on the table to play with our friends, uh, several of our friends, and 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 my son who um, we all play D and D, uh, and it. We want we wanted to find out whether or not uh, a lot of times these like branded trivial pursuits are crazy hard, like asking about deep cut upon deep cut. And you know, I've been in this industry now for over twenty years. Uh, I've been professionally part of role playing games for you know almost that whole time, and I've been playing role playing games for uh, much oh, actually very close to twice that amount of time. And uh, I, 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 I went into the idea of looking at some of these, some of these questions, and going, you know, is it going to be a, you know, is it going to be a, a just a, a landslide of a situation where I'm going to sit at the table and it's just going to roll off questions left and right, or is it actually going to be fun? And is it going to be fun for the other people at the table? Uh, because again, whether you're playing a board game, a role playing game, a miniatures game, the idea is that everybody's having a good time. And uh, it, it, I've been at Trivial Pursuit style games where one person has all the answers and everybody else just goes, meh. Um, and so we, we got out the cards and we looked at a few of them. And I, I knew a couple of the questions and, I, and there were a few that I was drawing a blank on. Um, a couple of them that I honestly just went, I, I don't know if I've ever known this. You know, it's not even a matter of forgetting something. It's just, nope, I don't know. Uh, so I wanted to I wanted to use this in some capacity, uh, and I thought that today, you know, uh, rather than uh, ignoring all of you wonderful, wonderful people out there uh, and doing a, a random, you know, here's a pre-recorded thing where I talk about a thing that's uninspiring. I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's go. Let's just I'm going to grab a handful right here and. I'm going to show you so you don't think that I'm cheating. I'm going to just shuffle a pile, shuffle a pile, shuffle a pile. All right. And we're going to set those off to the side. I'm not going to touch them again. My hands are way up here. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, uh, after we're ready to, uh, to get into these, I'm going to draw a card. And we're going to uh, let the chat pick a color. Uh, that way... It's not, you know, well, I know this one. I'm going to pick a card. I'm going to hold it out where you guys can see that I'm not like flipping around and looking at answers and stuff. Uh, and then we're going to see if I can't, if we're going to see if I know the answer. And 
If I do, then yay. And we're also going to see if anybody in the chat can, after I ask the question out loud, see if anybody in the chat can spout out that answer before I do. Uh, or before I give up and decide that uh, there's no way that I know that particular question. Um, yes. But before then, I'm going to take a sip of my icy. I see. Out of a Gen Con cup. I drink uh, almost everything out of my Gen Con cups. Uh, oh, uh, Swoosh says, Special Edition Star Wars Trivia Pursuit is the only way I can beat my brother-in-law at any movie trivia. He was an assistant manager at Blockbuster in college. Yeah, I I get that feeling. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers Suncoast Video. Uh, Suncoast Video is a store where they, or was a store, where they sold you know, DVDs and VHS tapes and, and CDs eventually, but a lot of movie paraphernalia and stuff too. And I worked at one of those for almost a year. Uh, combine that with all of the, uh, uh, you know, movie review stuff that I've done and and just the sheer fact that I, I consume uh, movie media. I totally understand. There's a lot of times little things will pop up that spark some kind of uh, memory in my skull. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's, what are we, what are the things, uh, Mike says, that's funny because I worked in a comic book store and couldn't, nope, you hit, you hit er, enters too fast. All right. Trying to find out what are the, what are the topics? All right. So, um, oh, I tell you anything that happened during that time in the books. All right. You know what? Sometimes it's because you have too much happening all at once and there's no retention you may have enjoyed it at that moment but there's no retention uh jeremiah says i'm not a very competitive person so i don't do a lot of trivia games but i'm usually pretty good at them when i do as long as it is in sports uh so all right before i do before i get into this i gotta talk about sports this week has been a downer everybody knows uh or most people know that i am a diehard red wings fan um when it comes to hockey massive have been ever since i was little and I, the, or the beginning of this season, we looked so strong, powerhoused our way through the first part of that season, grabbed a few players uh, that I wasn't expecting to be part of the team. And then we just sort of fell apart. And this week, earlier this week, uh, it was a, you know, after the last week where we were a point out of possibly being in the playoffs and we're so close and all it had to do, we had, we had to win one in regulation time. That's all we had to do. And we couldn't pull that off. And while we did win our games that we needed to win, someone else won in regulation time elsewhere. And um, we, uh, we are not in the playoffs this year. So my hockey season is over. I will still care to watch things like the Bruins and stuff to, to see how it goes. Stanley Cup is always a big deal, but it sucks. We became really, really close. Uh, Jeremiah says uh, that's the one where you kick the ball, the round ball. Uh, no, there's a little, there's a little, little, little plasticky pucky thing. Uh, Penguins didn't make it to the playoffs for the second year in a row after always making it. So I feel your pain. Yeah, second year in a row, it's a bit like eight for us. So, ouch. Uh, Swooshin says, yeah, no wings, no Hawks, no Blues. I don't think there's a team that he's interested in following for the playoffs. I like the Bruins. I uh, always have, so I probably pay attention to them, see how they go. All right, so now that, now that the, ho the hockey jaunt is over, <clears throat> so the, catch, the, the, the question categories for D&D &D Trivial Pursuit are green, magic and miscellany, yellow, history, Orange, Monsters, Pink, Dungeons and Adventures, Blue, Characters, and Purple, Cosmology. Uh, I know I can't expect everybody to have written that down. doesn't make any sense. Uh, just remember that it's green, yellow, orange, pink, blue, and purple. And let's see what the first question topic should be. Uh all right, chat. What color? What what color do you want? What color do you think we should do? Orange, me. All right, first one was orange. Here we go. First one's orange. All right. Uh, you you see a creature that looks. Yeah, I'm not going to try and hold it up. That's weird. Uh, you see a creature that looks like a floating brain with a beak, dangling ten barbed tentacles below. What is it? I believe that is a grill. I am correct. It is a grill. 
All right. Oh, and Jeremiah got it too. <clears throat> I have the benefit of being able to say it in real time. And Pe Michael J. Pastor's got it. Sweet. See, this pleases me. All right. Next card, next color. What do we got? That was a monsters question. Let's not do another monsters. Let's do something else. Yellow. Yellow is history. Hmm. All right. History, which I hope I'll do okay at this. If it's a lot of like history from the world, like the worlds, the setting worlds, maybe real history. Nah, uh, I'll be, I'll be and after, after the yellow, we'll do a purple yellow <clears throat> until D and D's third edition came along. Which armor class was worse, zero or 10? Third edition was where it switched away from Thaco. So 10 should be worse, I think. We are correct. And so is the chat. See, I love it when this happens. All right, someone already said purple. So next one is purple. Here we go. What is the term for the plane of true neutrality with gate towns to other question what is the term for the plane of true neutrality with gate towns to the outer plains on its borders and the city of sigil at its center mike just says uh yeah swoosh sigil's in this it's at the center uh the outlands is what michael and jeremiah say i don't know this i will i will be honest I know a lot of the planes, and I remember Sigil very, very, uh, uh, very, very specific because of Planescape, but I don't remember the map of where it sits. It is called oh, the Outlands. You guys got it. Awesome. See, this is fun. I like this. All right. Uh, next color. We have we haven't done a green, a blue, or a pink, or the concordant opposition. Ooh red which red is close to pink we'll do that and swoosh says pink as well all right pink is uh what does the c in the c series of modules such as c1 the hidden shrine of tamaukan stand for what is c what is the c could it be oh swoosh says it's that it's catacombs could we chapter like it's set up it's not module it's not adventure it's not catacombs or competitive all right let's see what it says purple set nope that's the wrong one <laughs> i almost gave you the pink uh competition all right so neither of us got it directly but it's it is a uh, consider it says so it's competition one the C series of modules is the competition series. Cool. I did not know that. I like learning things. Um, speaking of, so talking about trivial push, we're going to take a quick, uh, a quick side. So one of the things that I've always I, on that on that particular card, I almost read the answer to the wrong question. Uh, one of the one of the things. Thanks, Jeremiah. Uh, one of the things that I we've done since I was little. Anytime we played trivial pursuit is obviously you want to answer the question correctly like that's that's your goal but we had a, a standing house rule that if your question if your answer to the question just happens to be the answer to one of the other uh, uh questions on the card like it just happens to also be on the back of the card you still got it right as a matter of the universe wanting you to move on um I just I just thought that was it was funny. We got a lot of laughs out of it. I think it actually ever only ever happened like once, and someone was like uh, the Rainbow Collective or something, and uh, it, it I don't remember Rainbow Connection for uh, the Kermit song, and it happened to be one of the other answers. It's like the one time out of a thousand that we've ever that we've ever done. Uh, all right, next color. Uh, we just did a pink. We still have not done a blue or a green. We haven't done magic and miscellany or characters. And I need tea. Swoosh says green. All right, green it is. Oh, and then we'll do a blue after that. Uh, green. Uh, oh, this is this one's easy. Uh, pipes of the sewers are a magic item that allow you to summon what kind of creature? Rats. Rats. We knew that. That's 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 the easy one. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, blue, 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 blue. Uh, blue is what is the alignment of those who act with arbitrary violence spurred by their greed, hatred, or bloodlust? I'm going to say probably this is this is probably chaotic evil uh, because it says arbitrary violence. Probably chaotic evil. Yep, chaotic evil is correct. Dun, dun, dun. See, not these were. See, now now you understand why I looked at some of these cards when we were trying to sit down to think about playing, and it was like I wanted to, you know, like not all of these questions are so deep that. I don't think any like I don't think that complete new players to D and D would would not be able to get it, but I was uh, I was concerned. Bye, Jeremiah. Good good luck on your work call. Uh, thanks for stopping in. It's nice to see you even electronically. Um, and uh, so it's it. I, I think I think players could probably get through this. I just I it it does. I do want to avoid the be in the know-it-all at the table. So I would love to maybe be able to do teams or something with a couple other people that, that have as much, you know, well-versed in the, in the stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I really want to see this game get played more because it's so much more fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. All right. Uh, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think we're just going to go, uh, instead of keep calling out for colors because it gets, it gets weird. We're going to, we're going to go, uh, the next one, we're going to do green and then yellow and then orange and then pink and then blue and then purple and then green. And we're just going to, oh, D6 it. Oh, D6 it. It even makes more sense. And there is a D6 right here that came with it. Ha ha. Teams would work better, much would work, work much better for such a deep dive. I agree. I agree. I think that having, doing team, team questions and, and stuff would make more sense. Um, but I also do believe that there needs to be a time. This is one of the things that happened. So on the day that we weren't going to play this and we decided against it, because it seemed like the questions would be a little too more too bent towards, you know, the deep cuts is we decided to play Harry Potter trivial pursuit instead, which ended up being the same thing, except with Natalie being the one that knew everything. Um, and Jackie quite a bit as well, but uh, the rest of us were, uh, you know, we were guessing throwing out, you know, I've never read the books. I've seen all the movies uh, and enjoyed them a great deal. Uh, Bill, I think, has watched one movie. And Connor has seen the movies and I think read the first book. But he is 15, almost 16. So uh, Swoosh says he'll bring over the 20th anniversary 80s and 90s edition. So what I was thinking is, yes, mi mixed milieu. Uh, what I was thinking is that we each player choose like if i can if i can get my hands on a couple more genres and decks of cards i think each player should get to choose you because it's all the, the board and the, and the mechanics are all the same you know trivia pursuit has not changed how it plays and i think we just have different stacks of cards and we let the player who lands on it choose what stack they're they're picking from at that particular moment to at to answer a question and then at the end, whoever, once they've got all the pie pieces and they get to the middle, that the group, the, the consensus chooses which category and card that they come from. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you have over 8,000 Trivial Pursuit cards from various games. Whoa! Dang, Pastor. That's a lot. Uh, Swoosh Fan has Star Wars, Young Players, and 20th. Oh, and the 90s. See, next time that we think about playing this... I will call you and have you bring, Justin, I will have you bring over your stack of cards um, because then the colors might differ, but even if they, even if the colors differ a little bit, the the layout is more or less the same. Like we, you can get, just kind of go around and figure out where it is. All right, here we go. The one we're going to do is five. Five is characters. All right. Who among the following is not an elf? Jarlaxle, Caramon, Melf, or Portheos? All right, so obviously Melf, uh, Melf is an elf um, because he is Melf the elf uh, and is Luke, Luke Gygax's character. Caramon, um, 
I think I want to say Karaman is human. Jarlaxle and Portheos. I, I don't know Portheos. Jarlaxle, I'm almost positive, is an elf. And Karaman, I think Karaman's a human. I think Karaman's a human. All right. Here we go. Ba -bang. Karaman. It doesn't say whether or not he's human, but I was correct. La -da -da. All right. Next. Next on the list, we have number six, which is a cosmology question. Wah, wah, wah. All right. Which 1992 campaign setting was inspired by Middle Eastern literary sources such as 1001 Nights? That would be Al Qadim, uh, a section of the Forgotten Realms uh, that also introduced Janasi for the first time and the genie spellcasters. Uh, that I can't remember what they are called for the life of me, that now I believe there is a um, a sorcery patron that basically is the same thing. Al-Kadim it is. I liked Al-Kadim. Uh, I know that it's it had some, uh, some weirdisms in it. Uh, was Desert of Desolation retconned into that? Uh, I don't know. Um... In all honesty, I have no idea if if that was part of uh, if it became part of the the, the Alcadine universe. Um, it is possible that Desert of Desolation could be the boundary. So, well, part of part of the, the thing that made Alcadine cool and why it was sort of um, off on its own in its own world, uh, kind of like Karatur and the Oriental Adventures was its own world, but there was still a lot of like you know play back and forth. Um, is that it was always difficult to get there. Um, sounds like it could go to Dark Sun. Dark Sun's totally different, a different uh, sphere in the Phlogiston. It's a completely different world. Um, Athos is, uh, it, it's absolute old, its own animal. Um, and in my personal opinion, really awesome. Uh, and I, I wish, I wish today's gaming society would allow Dark Sun to be created. Uh, all right, next, rolling a d6, a one, uh, which is magic and miscellany. What tran okay, what transmutation spell allows you to vanish and reappear at another spot within a ten foot distance? Within a ten foot distance, is that blink? Misty step is within like sixty feet. Uh, blink, but I, I think blink sends you to like the ethereal plane. I think maybe there be. I think it's blink. I think it's blink. I think it's blink. Ah, we are correct. We are correct. It is blink. Ha ha. All right. Next. I hope this is fun. Uh, I, I just I I realize that I'm just sitting here reading questions and rolling dice and stuff. I'm hoping you guys, if you have any questions or anything, I know we're just kind of playing, you know, playing with some trivial pursuit cards right now uh, to to spend some time. Uh, but uh, if you have anything that you actually want to talk about, any deep seated questions, uh, you just you know chime in, say so. All right. Oh, another magic and miscellany. What illusion spell gives you a shifting, wavering appearance, making you harder to hit? I think blur. Blur makes the most sense. I am correct. And so is Swoosh and Michael J. Pastor. All right, next question. Oh, from one to six. Six is cosmology. Uh... Ooh, this one's going to be... Wow. Okay, here we go. Uh, Selvatarm, Kiarnsli, and Vairun are deities from the pantheon of which humanoids on Faerun? Wow. Uh, I'm... It's got a lot of syllables, a decent amount of consonants... I think oh, repeat the names Selvatarm, Kiar Kiarin Sali, and Veyrun are deities from the pantheon. I, I, I think elves, I think it's the elvish pantheon. 
man, I'm going to feel dumb if it's not. But I think it's elves. Any any uh, ideas from the from the, the the committee? Not seeing any ideas. All right, here we go. It is. Oh, I'm 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 correct, but I was not correct enough. Specifically, they are drow deities. Uh, see, I, if I was playing the game, I would not uh, I would not give myself. I would not give myself credit to that because it's very specific. It's not regular elves. It's drow. And I'm glad that they didn't put Lolth in there because that would have just been Im immediately. Oh, look, it's, it's, you know, it's drow gods. Ah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I like that. All right. Uh, five uh, characters. Um, ow. This one's easy. I will just keep my mouth shut. Uh, how many heads does Tiamat, the dragon goddess, have? We all know. We all have seen it. Seven. Justin. No. <laughs> it's not seven. It's five. It's five. It's got the, all of the heads of the... Uh, uh, of the chromatic dragons. Da, 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 da. Next one. Three. Three is monsters. Ooh, monsters. Uh, this was probably going to be... You guys will probably figure this one out. Uh, a dust mephit is composed of which two basic elements? Um, I mean, I would... My, my, initial, my initial thought would be air and earth. Uh, you know, dust is, is like filth and air, you know, it's a, it's, it's motes of, motes of, motes of dust on the wind kind of thing. That's, that's what I would, uh, that's, that's what I would say is, is air and earth and earth and air. All right. In fact, Michael J. Pastor, you even got it in the right order. All right. Do, 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 do. Next question. A one. It's another magic and miscellany. Uh, Ooh, this is one that I don't know if I'll get. What thickness of stone is needed to block the spell detect magic? So in the description of the spell, it tells you that like one inch of metal or, or 12 inches of lead or, or something. It specifically says, you know, detect magic can't go through this. And I think, I want to say it's more than three feet of stone. Maybe maybe a foot of stone. Michael says twenty feet of stone. I th I'm gonna say three feet. I think it's three feet of stone. Nope. Dagnabbit. One foot. The spell is also blocked by three three feet of earth. That's what I was thinking. An inch of metal or a she or any thickness of lead. Ah. Uh, so three feet of regular like dirt, but only a foot of stone. Cool. Here we go. Next random. Number five. It was a character's question. Uh, ooh. Who is the supreme ruler of all the devils in the nine hells? I think that's not much either way. That's true. It's not much either way. You can totally see through a bunch of stuff. If somebody has buried a magical item, uh, unless they put it six feet deep, you can totally find it with the tech magic. Um, I guess unless they go more than three feet deep. All right. Uh, so what, the question was, uh, who is the supreme ruler of all the devils in the nine hells? Um, gosh. Asmodeus? As, 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 Asmodeus? I think. Swooshin says, got a lot of background noise with Chris watching the trial. Trial? I didn't know there was a trial going on. Uh, doing the best not to interrupt her. Uh, should run and find some headphones. Uh, Michael J. Pastor's Orcus. Uh, so I, I don't think Orcus is the, the lord of all the hells, but I do think Orcus runs one of the hells. Uh, but I think it's Asmodeus. I am correct. Uh, Asmodeus, he is sometimes called by his title, the Archduke of Nessus. 
I did not know his title. I'm glad they didn't ask that. I'm glad they didn't ask what the title of Asmodeus was. I would not know that. Uh, number two, uh, history. Okay. When Dragon Magazine moved away from print to its current online form, what name did it take on? Oh. Oh, that's a good question. When Dragon Magazine moved away from print to its current online form, what name did it take on? It's not... Michael says Dragon Plus... Is a good it's a good answer it's a good it's a good if you know, if that's not the answer that's a good a, a good idea um gosh i really don't know i mean i, I want to say i want to say something stupid like dragon online or something oh no michael you got it it's dragon plus good on you man point for michael all right. Uh, as, uh, as a side note, we are 35 minutes into this live. Uh, we're going to do this for another 10 minutes or so. Um, I've got to cut it a little bit short today because I have a meeting this afternoon uh, that I cannot be late for. All right. Next question. Another one. This is another magic and miscellany. This D6 has a lot of ones. Um, how many questions can you ask of your deity upon casting the spell Divination? I think there's one, right? I'm pretty sure it's just one. I can't imagine you can have a big, deep conversation. I think it's just one. We are correct. Just one. All right. Next question. Oh, the sixth. Uh, this is another cosmology. Uh, the gods of the sovereign host and the dark six are the pantheons of which world? That's Faerun, I think. I think that's the Forgotten. I think that's from the Forgotten Realms. I think that's Faerun. No, I am wrong. Keith Baker would be mad at me. It's Aberon. Ah, cool. All right. Yeah, no, I, I did not know that at all. That's awesome. Next one, another six, another cosmology. In the Forgotten Realms, who is the god of protection, whose symbol is a staring eye on an upright left gauntlet? Upright left gauntlet, staring eye. It's not tear, is it? God of protection? Or is that helm? It's either helm or tear. Or I'm super wrong. <laughs> Which is also possible. I'm going to say I think it's tear. I think it's tear. Ooh, Michael says it's Helm. All right. Saw Swoosh says it's Helm as well. I guess I'm probably wrong. Guy, it is Helm. I knew it was one of the two. I couldn't remember. All right. Uh, this is a monsters question. Uh, by what method do Pegasi reproduce? Magic, laying eggs, or live birth? Ah, oh, that's a cool deep cut. Um, <laughs> Michael says, if I if I wouldn't have said Helm, I wouldn't have guessed it. I knew it was one of the two. Uh, oh, uh, oh, Michael says laying eggs. Swoosh says magic. I can't imagine that Pegasi do live birth. I think laying eggs. I love. I. I <laughs> this is gonna, with, the reason why I'm saying this is not because I actually know this question. It's because I love the idea of seeing like a pegasi nest with like baby pegasi, you know, poking their heads out of eggs. And if this, if if they do in fact breed by laying eggs, I now know something that I want to make sure is in an adventure that I write at some point. All right, orange question is live birth. All of us were wrong. Uh, live birth, Pegasi give birth to live young, which they rear inside their nests. Ah! Dag nabbit. So we still get a cool nest, but just no eggshells. Sad. All right. Next question. One, uh, which is a magic... Man, this die, this die does a ton of ones. I'm, I'm complaining to the Tribute Pursuit people. 
Uh, what enchantment spell shatters intellect and personality, reducing a target's intelligence and charisma to one? Hmm. It's not Ray of Enfeeblement? Does Ray of Enfeeblement, maybe? Enchantment spell. The Morden Caden's Mystic Derby? I don't, I don't, I, God, I don't know. Intelligence and charisma to one. Nichols Neanderthalism? I, I I have no idea. This is this is going to be a good question because I don't know this one. Do you guys have any questions? Oh, I think you have it. Oh, you think you think it's Raven Feeble? See, I didn't think that it dropped it to one. I thought Raven Feeble just kind of like lowered it by a little. All right, what do we got? Oh, I was close. It's Feeble Mind. It's the it's the the ups the up jumped version. Oh, sad. All right, here we go. Ooh, a uh, number two, history. Here we go. <laughs> Michael's like, ah, yes. I could, I could see you like holding a cup of wine, listening. Ah, yes. Uh, what star of the? Fa oh, it, I know, I know this. I'll, I'll give you guys a shot. Uh, what star of the Fast and Furious franchise is an avowed fan of D and D? Technically, there are two answers to this that I, if I was running this card, there'd be two answers on this. Um, Michael says, Vin, we know that Vin Diesel is big in D&D. He always has been. He's a big fan. But as of like two years ago, Michelle Rodriguez, who played uh, the Barbarian in the Dungeons and Dragons movie, got to play D&D for the first couple of times before the film and specifically said wow this is awesome i would do this some more so uh and and there's interviews that say so so i would have accepted both but we know the answer they want is vin diesel yay we all get points number two that's another history uh what actor wrote an advice column in dungeon magazine called will save w-i-l save what actor? Probably Will Wheaton. I'm. I'm. He's a. He's a dork. He's. He's big into games. It's probably Will Wheaton. Uh, not to mention, it's spelled W I L like his first name, so it is probably Will Wheaton. We are correct. Uh, it started in issue number one sixteen in September two thousand and four, so twenty years ago. Wow. All right, here we go. Number four. Oh, Dungeons and Adventures. Here we go. Uh, we haven't done very many of these. If you are fighting the Dragon Night Scale by the Black Lake, what third edition module are you playing? Whoa. That's Night Scale by the Black Lake. What third edition module are you playing? <laughs> Whoa. Uh gosh, I have no idea. See, this is why I like doing this and why I would like playing the game at the table. Yeah, we know a lot of the questions. We know a lot of this stuff, but man, all of them. I, oh God, I love this. If you're fighting the Dragon Knight Scout by the Black Lake, what third edition module are you playing? God, I, I, I really have no idea. I have no idea. All right. Uh, the Forge of Fury. No idea. Oh, God, that's cool. See, again, it's part of part of seeing some of these things. You now there's a part of me that like wants to go out and try and find the Forge and Fury, or at least like a copy of it. There was so much third edition. You are completely correct. That was a a big swell in adventure modules and stuff. All right, here we go. We got two, three more questions before I've got to get going. Uh, five, another character's question. Uh, Drizzt Duerden has a magical figurine that summons his companion, Guinevar. Who takes the form of what animal? Wait. Oh, so this want to know what the animal that Guinevar is? He's a panther. Yeah, he's a black panther. And Okay, that question was much longer than it needed to be. Talked about his magical figurine and stuff. 
All right. Cosmology question. You know what? After this one, because this is a this is a purple question, uh, we'll do six more questions, and we'll actually just go down the list. We'll go right down the right down the rule. <clears throat> purple question. Uh, viewed from above, what shape is the island of Solstice, where Oral the Frost Maiden dwells in the far north of Faerun? Viewed from above, what shape is the island of Solstice, where Oral probably a moon, probably a crescent moon? Talking about a solstice, talk, it, might, oh, it might be the sun. Crescent moon, yeah, I'm thinking it's I'm thinking it's a moon. I'm gonna say crescent moon because that's a because a, a regular moon is just a, a <laughs> it's just a, a round island. Uh, I'm gonna say crescent moon. I'm gonna I'm a, I agree with you guys. No, it's a snowflake. The island of solst winter solstice. The island of Solstice is shaped like a snowflake with six jagged arms that protrude into the sea. Man. Tells you how much I know about that. All right. So now, no more dice. No more of this D, D1 dice. Go, we're just going to go down the line. Here's a green. Green is what fifth level evocation spell takes 24 hours to cast and permanently infuses an area with holy or unholy power? Consecrate, desecrate? I didn't think that was evocation, though. I think it's consecrate, desecrate. Consecrate slash desecrate. I think. I think, I think, I think. All right. And bam! No! Jab! We lose. It is called Hallow. H-A-L-L-O-W. As in hollowed ground. Man. All right. All right. Yellow question. Our last history question of the day. Who co-authored the medieval fantasy war game rules Chainmail with Gary Gygax in 1971 before D&D was published? Specifically Chainmail. I think it's Dave Arneson. Um, and I, I'll, be, I'll be sad if it's not. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Dave Arneson. And I have a funny story. Or not even funny. It's a. It's a. It's it's a, a one of the mo one of the memories that I will never, I will never forget uh, about Dave Arneson specifically. And yellow is oh no, Jeff Perrin of Rockport, Illinois. Huh. All right. <laughs> so she says, "I plead the fifth. Yeah, no, Jeff Perrin did that. All right. Uh, well, it wasn't it wasn't him, but uh, I'll I'll give you my quick Dave Arneson story before we move on to our orange question. Um, so Dave Arneson, one of the uh, the fathers of D and D, uh, towards the end of his life, uh, spent a lot of time at, at, at when in the conventions in a wheelchair, being pushed around, uh, I believe, by one of his sons. Um, but uh, I was, this was way back when I was still at Mongoose Publishing, uh, writing a lot of stuff for Babylon 5 and Conan and Traveler and, and RuneQuest and stuff. And uh, I, I saw, you know, I was working in one of the booths, it was at Origins, and uh, I saw Dave being wheeled around our booth and his, uh, I, like I said, I think it was his son, um, whoever was pushing him around uh, was basically filling his lap with, with Conan books. And uh, I saw it as an opportunity. It was very still early in my career. I saw it as an opportunity to go say hi to literally one of the men who helped shape the industry for me to be able to work in. And so I walked up to him and I was like, hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, you guys finding everything okay? You know, the, the, the normal uh, booth, booth side chit chat. And Dave looked at my badge, uh, saw, saw my name and said, Brian, uh, Brian Steele. It was before I started adding the CP to it all the time. Uh, Brian Steele, you've uh, you, you've done a bunch of this, haven't you? Pointed at the Conan. And I was like, I, I've done a fair share, fair stuff. And he goes, he's like, it's 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 good work. You should keep it up. And that moment for me uh, was already I was already like elated that you know he's he, he recognized my name. Uh, Mongoose didn't put very many names on the covers, so I knew that he actually did know that my name, he, for all I know, five seconds before, he might have flipped open one of those books on his lap and saw my name. Um, but whatever the case may be, is that he, he recognized it, he had a nice words to say, and it was a, a, a gentle pat on the back at a time in my career 
were, man, did I need that. And I will, I will hold that, um, I will hold that moment in my, uh, in my heart and my mind forever, uh, to the same degree that, uh, the very recently I found out that, uh, cause I've, I've not had a chance to work with Elminster himself with Ed Greenwood. Um, I, I had, uh, I was on a podcast and apparently Ed was on the podcast before I was and found out that Ed had name dropped me in a podcast that I wasn't involved with. And that will be another one of those moments. It's an amazing person. Now that I've got a chance to actually befriend him and know him, he's amazing and I love him to death. Uh, but there's still something that, that will always be that little voice in the back of my head that was like, dude, El Minster told a different podcast that he's working with you specifically. Blew me away. Blew me away. <clears throat> All right. That was a that was the yellow question. Now we're down to orange question. Here we go. Uh, this is monsters. Uh, oh, okay. This is one of my favorite words to say. Sometimes at random. Sometimes as a profanity swear. Uh, what is the common name for the creature sometimes called Swerf Neblin? Uh, obviously, it's deep gnomes. Um, but I I have used Swerf Neblin as a way to uh, exercise my personal demons before by saying such things, be like, ah, Smurf Neblin. So uh, yes, deep gnomes. Smurf Neblin are gnomes that live in underground caverns. Dun, dun, dun. I love Smurf Neblin. All right, next one up is Dungeons and Adventures. Pink, uh, what treaties on the abyss and its denizens written by Igwilv first appears in S4, The Lost Caverns of Sokanth. What treatise on the abyss and its denizens, written by Igwilv, first appears in season or S4, The Lost Caverns of Sokanth? Shokanth. I have no idea. I have found my weak point. How topical. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, uh I, I, I literally have no idea. The Demonomicon of Igwilv. Okay. There we go. That's a thing. Blue characters. In Dragonlance, the Sylvanesti and Qualanesti are what type of humanoids? This is easy. They are elves. They are the two primary types of elves uh, that um, dominate the Dragonlance universe. Elves, yeah, I knew that one. That was that one was easy. All right, our last question of the day. Actually, you know what? We'll do one more after this. We'll do the the, the last cosmology question, and then then we will let you guys pick the final color for the final question before I say goodbye for the day. All right, most humanoid civilizations in parentheses, dwarf, elf, human, halfling, etc. Inhabit which plane of existence? This would be the prime material plane. I believe that's what they still call it. I think, I, I'm almost positive it's called the prime material plane. Oh, it is called the material plane, sometimes called the prime material plane. All right, so I would definitely score those points. All right, I will let you guys agree. Yes, Swoosh and Michael J, you guys have been very active in the in the chat. You guys have to agree on a color. You gotta agree agree on green, yellow, orange, pink, blue, or purple. Oh, Michael says cosmology. He wants another cosmology question. Cosmology is probably a good one for me, but the Dungeons and Adventures is the hard one. That one's a hard one. Oh, all right. You guys both agreed on cosmology. Here we go. Last question of the day, and then we will say goodbye for today. In Faerun, which of the old empires, a rival of Mullerand, declined under the rule of the god king Gilgim and fractured after his death? Which of the old empires, a rival of Mullerand, declined under the rule of the god-king Gilgim and fractured after his death? 
the dwarves? The dwarven old empire? <laughs> Michael says, I'm sorry I picked cosmology. You know what? It's good to be stumped. It's good to be stumped. It's good to show that this game is not going to be easy for anybody. Um, which of the old empire? So Swoosh says the old dwarven empire. Rival of Mullerand declined under the rule of the god king Gilgame. the god king there's something about that uh oh is it fey is it is it is it the the red wizards of fey is it fey all right I, my guess is fey and i think i'm wrong it is unther the god or the the old empire of Unther. Okay, so difficult question, no idea, but that does bring us to the end of today's live. I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, getting to, to listen to some silly silly lore and some fun things. Uh, next week we'll have a little bit more of a of a direct topic to talk about. Um, but I, I did I, I did want to just kind of show off some of the cool stuff that's in this in this uh, trivial pursuit and uh, also maybe show some of the people who might play with me that I don't know all of it by any stretch and that this will hopefully be fun for everyone. I hope I hope. Uh, but without further ado, please, please, please be safe. Wash your hands, get your shots, wear a mask if you have to. Don't lick doorknobs. You know, all that uh, all, all that wonderful stuff. And, uh, you know, just try and leave every room a little happier than when you got there. Uh, and I think uh, everything will work out or just fine. I know I will be, but hopefully before I see you next, you'll get a chance to play some games. We'll see you next week. <laughs>